it started out like any other day. I set off for work just after half six. Oh, what are you breaking for, you dipshits? Come on, just go. Uh, uh. And that's when it started. Hello? Good, mate, it's Al. Where have you been? Oh, sorry, uh, Helen was running late for work, so I had to get the kids tea and get them in the bath and, you know. Right, uh, coming to be about it, ain't it, mate? Anyway, I'm just ringing to let you know, you have a landscaping crew which the client has dropped onto the work tonight. Got a bear's tree and some other bits they want to doing further down the site. Don't have any more details than that, unfortunately. Uh, I haven't had a chance to amend the bridging plan and the reefing though, so we'll just have to wing this one. That okay? Do I have a choice? Oh, you know the client needs to get the work done, mate. Always the same during cycle, isn't it? Look, the guy's name is Johnny. I've given him your mobile and told him to make sure he's at the depot for the briefing. Well, as long as he's at the briefing, all right, I'm assuming he's not been on this site before, so I'm going to have to give him full induction. Uh, he's a new contractor, so he for greenscapes, apparently. Okay, well, like you say, I don't really have a choice, do I? Thanks, Dave. Have a good night. Cheers, Al. Yeah, you have a nice evening at home, why don't you? Well, I'd clear up your crap as usual. As usual, client makes last-minute changes without any consideration for us. Same shit, different day. Come on, mate, hurry up. Get in, we're running late already. Bad day, mate. Oh, Helen was running late and, you know, don't... Even, you know, what women are like. Sometimes it's not worth the hassle. Oh, oh. oh yeah, you better get that. Dave Cowling's phone. Oh, hello, mate. This is Johnny, the landscaper. I'm working on the cyclist maintenance tonight for Greenscapes, and I'm just ringing to get my work instructions. It's a landscaper. Right, tell him the, the briefing is at Stilton at 7. Hi, Johnny. Dave says the briefing and induction is at 7 at Stilton. Uh, to be honest, mate, there's no way I'm going to be there by then. No, I, I'm, I'm at least an hour away. And the traffic at this time of night is going to be murder. No one told me to, I had to be there for seven, you see. He says he can't be there for that. Nobody told him it was at seven. As if things weren't bad enough already. Bloody hell, put him on speaker, will you? We need to get going. Johnny, look, it's Junction 16, southbound. I've got your work instructions on email. Obviously, I can't see them now, but I'll uh, meet you just inside the site entrance and I'll give you a full briefing then, OK? All right, buddy, yeah. Latest I'll be there is half eight. OK, see you there. All right, cheers, buddy. Bye-bye. So just in case you aren't following things, let me fill you in. It's the last night of cyclic maintenance, so the pressure is on. There I am, late. I've picked up Tom, the TM foreman, after having a bomb dropped on me by Alan, my contracts manager, that the client wants oh, to drop a landscaping crew stop, stop. into the works to save a bit of money. And now the landscaper has called to say he can't even make the briefing. Right, lads, it's a busy one tonight. Uh, usual drill we've had all week. Uh, lots of shit going on. We've got uh, patch repair, we've got lighting crews, we've got barrier repair at marker post 15 over zero. So uh, stick your names down on the paperwork and uh, get ready to go. Come on, because uh, you know what the client's like. They like this done yesterday. Uh, hey, at least it's the last night, innit, eh? You know? <sighs> Onwards and upwards, gentlemen, you know the score. Oh, I uh, almost forgot they've dropped a landscaping crew in us on this job. Last minute. He names uh, uh, Johnny Warren. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's running late, apparently. Usual excuse. He didn't know when the briefing was. So we'll let you know when and where he is on site when it happens, yeah? But just otherwise, watch your backs, yeah? Well, there we go. Briefing done. The lads all know what they're doing. Same job as last night. What could possibly go wrong?
buddy. Are you Dave? Yeah, I assume you must be Johnny. I am, yeah. I'm standing by Greenscape. I meant to cut down a couple of birch trees. You don't know where they are, do you? Yeah, yeah, there's one uh, down the road at marker post 16 over zero, and then one about a mile further down at uh, marker post 14 over five. Um, should be pretty quiet tonight. Most of the stuff's finished in this work area. Is this your van? It is, yeah. That's a right stay, isn't it? It's bloody filthy. Where the hell are your beacons? Yeah, I know. My beacons got nicked yesterday. <laughs> to be honest, we don't even use them much. Like, we don't really work on the highways. It's booked into the garage tomorrow to get it all sorted, like. Look, most of our work's done on farms, clearing ditches and stuff. I came straight from a farm in Spalding today to be here. I mean, I shouldn't even let you on site. I, I should kick you off right now. Come on, mate. Look, it's getting fixed tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Yeah, it's getting booked in at 9 o'clock. If this wasn't the last night on site, I'd throw you off right now, OK? All right. Well, watch yourself driving around site, yeah? And if, if anybody says anything, you're gone, OK? Yeah. Cheers, buddy, thanks. No worries. I mean, you've got my number. If you need anything, give me a shout, yeah? Yeah, yeah we'll do. I can get your PPE on. It's in the cab, I will. Yeah. Cheers, bud. Yeah, give me some good news. The night just gets better and better. First, I have a landscaping crew dropped on me without any of the correct paperwork being done by the client. Then, he turns up only for me to find out he's never worked on the roads and he's used to cleaning out ditches. And don't get me started on his van. But all we hear from the client is get the job done. I suppose after all that he's only chopping down some trees on the verge, isn't he? And that's how I ended up here. The place I've called home for the last few months. After being found guilty of Tom's death, I was sent to prison. So I'm approaching release, having served just over half my sentence. And to be honest, I don't know how I feel about it. I'll get my freedom back and hopefully some dignity. And it'll be good to see some of my old mates, if they're still around. I certainly won't miss the food in here, or the smell. Or the abuse. I see this as a new chapter in my life. I mean, nothing will be the same as before I went inside. I'll probably still have the nightmares, reliving what was said in court. David Cowley, you have been found guilty of a breach of Section 7 of the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. Following your negligence, a man who worked for you and relied upon you to make sound judgments has died. I sentence you to 12 months custody. Take him down. I never thought it would lead to this. Even though I'll be out, I still have to comply with my present release obligations. I remember what the, that judge said very clearly, and, and the governor's written it down for me. Um, you will normally be released on licence once you have served half your sentence. Your licence will come continue until the end of your sentence and if you are convicted of a further offence or breach any of the requirements of your licence you may be returned to prison. On top of that I have to see a probation officer every week for the next 12 months and if I miss one of those I go back inside. A lot's changed since I've been inside. My wife or rather my ex-wife has now gone off with someone else the kids don't seem to want to know me. My mates, my family, no one came to visit when I was in prison. I don't know where I'm going to crash. I suppose I could try the locals, see if there's anyone there I know. It doesn't look very hopeful. I haven't really got much money for beer anyway. They only give you £46 when you get released. I'm going to have to spend half of that on a taxi. But a taxi where? I've got no home to go to. No savings, the wife spent that. 
Got the court fees to pay. Got debt of four and a half grand. Also got a letter from my employers saying they've got to let me go. So I have a job now. Don't know how I'm going to get another one. I'm not sure where I'll go or how I'll eat. That 46 pounds is going to have to go a long way. The prison helper suggested there's a, like a like a halfway house, a, a place I can go for a few weeks while I apply for benefits. Never had to do that before. You see, the thing is, you can't even apply for benefits while you're inside. You've got to wait till you get out. Then it's two weeks till you get your money. That is, if I'm entitled to any in the first place. I don't know. Um, I didn't think about all this that night. That's for sure.